Hey guys, welcome back here to another edition of Advanced Bass Fishing. Really appreciate you guys watching today's video. And man, I really uh, appreciate the support you guys are showing the new channel so far because it's really grown good, man. It's just the Advanced Bass Fishing channel has been growing faster than my main channel, Intuitive Angling, when it started. So I guess everybody likes the uh, the longer seminar, seminar style videos, but I just uh, want everybody to know out there that I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel and subscribing and I'd like to invite everybody to ask their friends to subscribe too. Much appreciated. Guys, today we're going to be covering, I'm going to give you guys a in-depth tutorial on one of the most popular lures out there, which is a soft plastic stick bait like this fluke here. Um, out of, on my main channel on Intuitive Angling, when I do a fluke video, it usually gets a lot of views. A lot of people are really interested in this. It's a great bass catcher and we're going to go over in detail everything about them as far as colors, rigging, modifications, uh, how to tackle you need to fish them on, different ways to set them up, and then finally the areas that you need to fish them in. So it's gonna be, we're gonna cover all that in today's video here. Um, also guys, before we get started, uh, if you guys like the content here on, on uh, Advanced Bass Fishing and you wanna help support the channel, one of the best ways you can do it is just use the links I put in the description. There's different links in there like uh, lake map breakdowns I do, the virtual lessons, solar bat sunglasses, and by using those links, uh, it's a good, good way to support the channel, so that's much appreciated. Uh, appreciate on that, guys. Okay, guys, right off the bat, we're going to start out and get into this a little bit. I want to sort of give you a little bit of a history and, and cover the, um, and, and cover basically what this lure is all about first. Then we're going to get into some colors, because colors are critical, some mod color modifications, uh, rigging, tackle, that type of stuff, and then areas finally like that. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the fluke. The, and when I, when I say fluke, I'm just saying soft plastic jerk bait because that's what this is. The Zoom fluke is the one I use, but there's different brands. And when they call it a soft plastic jerk bait, that's just what it sounds like because you basically work this a lot of times just like you would a jerk bait. In some situations, there's there's a lot of other ways you can fish this that we're going to cover it, but the most famous way and how it got its name as a soft plastic jerk bait is most people fish it out there just like a jerk bait. They jerk it and twitch it just like a jerk bait. Um, so that therefore that how, how it's got its name. And the predecessor to this was, I don't know if you guys knew about it, but it was the old Sluggo. Now the Sluggo was just a, uh, uh, I think I got some here if I got them. Hold on a second. I'll show you guys the Sluggo over here. Should have brought my Sluggo box out, but here's the predecessor, guys, before the fluke. This was the old Sluggo right here, the original soft plastic jerk bait. Guys, I've caught a freaking ton of fish on the Sluggo. I've actually probably caught more on the Sluggo than the fluke, and this was the modern, modern day version of it, the fluke versus the Sluggo here, but this is where it all started, and when that Sluggo came out, you know, man, it's been probably over 35 years ago. Guys, there was a ton of tournaments won on it and a lot of big bass caught. In fact, I'll tell you a quick story here. The most memorable strike I've ever had in my life on, was on a Sluggo, which is a soft plastic jerk bait down at Lake Okeechobee. I was practicing down there for an FLW tournament. <clears throat> in this area I was fishing, the water was probably four foot deep, really clear. It was like crystal clear, which is really pretty unusual for Okeechobee had some grass around it, and I was throwing that sluggo out there and just twitching it just under the surface. So I'd made a cast out there with this thing, and I'm twitching this sluggo just under the surface, and guys, I swear, it looked like you started up a 250 horsepower outboard and nailed it. It was literally the biggest boil I have ever seen in my life. It had, the, the boil that this fit, when this fish hit the sluggo, the boil must have been four or five foot in diameter. It was so big that I, the first thing that came to my mind is like, there's no way that's a bass. It's like, there's no way a fish can move that kind of water out there. And I set the hook on it and I, when I'm fight, I still hadn't seen the fish. And while I'm fighting this fish, I, I told myself, it's like, there's nothing else in Lake Okeechobee that would hit a sluggo like that. It's gotta be a giant bass. And about that time that thing jumped and it was a bass and I got it in and it weighed nine pounds and 14 ounces. The, that was the most ferocious strike I've ever had in my entire bass fishing career on that, on that sluggo there. So it can be an exciting lure category. But anyway, 
The flukes came along um, shortly after that, and they've been a mainstay for over 25 years, years with that. So um, there's a lot of different ways to fish a fluke, aside from the soft plastic jerkbait traditional style that we're gonna get into. But the first thing I wanna do, guys, is I'm gonna show you my six favorite colors because a fluke is a 100% sight bait. It doesn't move a lot of water. It doesn't telegraph itself. It doesn't make a lot of noise. It's a sight bait. And anytime you're dealing with a sight bait, color is very critical. And the color that I use, it's dependent upon, you know, the typical color considerations, which is the water clarity that you're fishing and the light intensity. Those two factors play a big role in the color. So I'm just sort of gonna go over what my favorite colors are here. I'm gonna show you how I modify them at times to get to get the best out of it. So right off the bat, let's talk about the uh, just the pearl fluke. The pearl fluke is probably the most popular color, pearl or white like this. This is a this is probably the best color in if you're fishing water that is a little bit off colored a little bit. If there's any color out there that will draw a strike from water that is marginal. When I'm talking about marginal water visibility, I consider anything like less than two foot of visibility to be marginal for a fluke. I don't consider a fluke a lure to use very much in below two foot of visibility, but when I do use it, it is a, it's a pearl pattern like this. So normally I don't do anything to it. I just use the pearl or the white and it really glows in the water and um, it, will, it, it will catch fish in that water visibility of like 15 inches to 24 inches. Pretty, probably the best color that you can use in there. Also, if you have a little bit cleaner water and you have a dark day, say for example, it's cloudy or rainy, this is another color that I go to there. The next one is, um, <clears throat> I think they call this, now I'm not real familiar with all these colors, but this one I think they call it the albino. Now, the albino is a really good clear water color because you can see it sort of translucent a little bit. But one of the things I do on the albino, which I do on quite a bit of them, I'm gonna show you the difference here. Um, what it looks like before and after is I do when I'm do when I'm fishing a fluke, guys. I do use marking pins a lot because you can really make a fluke look a lot different based upon how you mark it. So this is um, one of the tricks that I do with the albino. Is I see the the separation in color there. I just draw a chartreuse line right down um, the length of the fluke, right where that color is. And then I may put a little bit of a chartreuse on the tail for coloration. And I'll show you the, the difference, how this looks. Now here, here's the marking I had just with the chartreuse and here's the stock on it. You can see the difference. But for some reason that chartreuse on there, even in clear water, it works really good because it's really subtle. And I very seldom fish the fluke just like this. I'll usually almost always put some chartreuse on it. Actually this, the way that I'm marking these flukes up, my buddy Aaron Martins is the one that really showed me how to do this and showed me the effectiveness of it. So the albino with the chartreuse is really good. The next one is the cotton candy, guys. Now the cotton candy is a really good color also in a little bit off-colored water. It's probably sort of akin to the pearl in the fact that these are the two off-colored water uh, considerations I have. If the water is like, right on the border of being too dirty, say 15 inches in visibility, I'll use the pearl. But if the water is still off colored, but a little bit cleaner, say it's in that two foot range, then I'll use the, uh, the cotton candy like this. The cotton candy stands out, yet it's a little bit more subtle than the pearl. So this is a, a really good color for that. And another thing I do with the cotton candy, I usually don't come along the side there, but I usually will put a little bit of a, just a little bit of chartreuse on the tails there. And this is uh, with the marking pen like that. It just adds some, some nice color to it. it sort of gives the, the fish something to focus on there. Next one, guys, is baby bass. Baby bass is one of my favorite colors for a different technique that we're gonna get into, which is Carolina, Carolina rigging a fluke. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But the baby bass, I caught a ton of fish on it. And baby bass works really good in, if you have, water that is a little bit tannic acid. So if you guys are fishing around any type of areas that have grass in the lake, uh, you know, Florida lakes, Texas lakes, uh, TVA lakes, up north, if you have grass, milfoil or hydrilla, there's something about the baby bass pattern that will work really good 
in a little bit uh, more tannic water that is created by grass. And again, I'll put the uh, chartreuse on the tail and you can see it just sort of gives it a nice, a nice color there with the chartreuse mix. The next one is a, I think this is a Christmas tree or something. I can't remember of it, but it's just sort of a shaddy looking color with a light colored belly. I actually can't even remember the name of it, but guys, I catch a lot of fish on this just in uh, average water clarity conditions. If you have water visibility of three to four feet, um, this is just a really natural looking color. It's a natural looking, oh, I think it's called bait fish is the name, is the color of this. I may be wrong, but uh, they got so many dang flute colors, guys, it's hard to even keep up with them. I mean, they got, God dang, it seems like a hundred different colors of flute colors. But again, with this bait fish color or whatever they color, you know, I'll put a little bit of uh, chartreuse on it there. I'll show you the difference here. Isn't that really good looking there versus like that? It just cr creates a different look to it. And then finally, the last color is the watermelon seed. Now guys, the watermelon seed, this is the one that I use. And it's, it's one of the most versatile colors you have because again, this will work really good in clear water or tannic water. Um, the baby bass and the watermelon seed, if I'm fishing like in Florida or Texas, anywhere there's milfoil or hydrilla, I almost always use the watermelon seed. Watermelon is a great color. And also watermelon seed is one of my favorite colors for flipping a fluke, which we're going to talk about later, and Carolina rigging a fluke. And almost without exception, I always put the uh, little bit of chartreuse on the tail of the watermelon. They do have a green pumpkin, but um, I've always done a little bit better on the watermelon there, just a little bit of stuff on that. So that's my six uh, main color considerations there. Okay. So the thing about colors a little bit, talk a little bit more about color, is one of the things about a visual strike lure like a fluke in terms of finding the right color, you've got to have a foundation somewhere. And that foundation usually starts with, um, again, the water clarity and the tint of the water. Because when you're talking about terms of water clarity, there's also tints to consider. Now, tints have a lot to do with the, the like the, uh, uh, sort of like the composition of the soil that the lake is on, like the, the whatever, what kind of what's that called? It's on the tip of my tongue, but whatever the the minerals or algae or plankton in the water. Different different water clarities in different parts of the country will have a different tint, even though the water may be clear or stained. Say for example, if you're fishing here in Table Rock Lake, uh, we may have a uh, you may have water clarity of four foot, but there may be like a little green tint to it because of the algae here. If you're fishing water visibility in Lake Toho, Florida, that has four foot of clarity, it may have a little black tint to it because of the tannic acid. And then if you're fishing maybe up north at a place like Lake Champlain or Lake St. Clair, it may have a little blue tint in it based upon, again, you know, the composition of the materials on the, on the water. Now this tint combined with the water clarity, combined with the wind and compliant, combined with the, the amount of sunlight penetration that you have will all determine the color. So what I just gave you there is sort of like a good foundation to start with, but ultimately you have to let the fish tell you. And that's why when you're fishing a soft plastic stick bait, it's a really good idea to have a pretty good color selection. I mean, they're not like real expensive, so it's, it's not that big of a stretch to buy it, you know, a bag of, and try a bunch of different colors on it. Um, and don't, don't forget, don't, I mean, don't be afraid to experiment because there are so many colors available in, in a soft plastic stick bait that the fish don't see. Um, just try something they haven't seen before. And again, experiment with colors, experiment with a lot of different dyes out there, make up your own. And another thing that you can do, which uh, makes a big difference too, is you guys that are, have watched the channel, you, you hear to me referring all the time about roughing up plastics. Now you can do this with the flute too, because there's a lot of salt in them. Let me show you the difference here. If you take some time and break the salt up in these things, this is a, a very critical thing to do with the fluke for a couple different reasons. First of all, a fluke is a, it's a pretty substantial amount of plastic. And anytime you're dealing with a substantial amount of plastic, you have a hook penetration to consider. So what you want to do is by roughing this thing up and breaking up the salt, it makes the plastic softer and it makes the penetration better. So look at the, the coloration difference right there. Just this is the same, you know, baby or a cotton candy fluke. 
This is right out of the package, and this is after I've roughed it up. You can notice a little bit of the color change. So anytime you can do that by roughing the bait up, you're creating a color that the fish don't see very much, breaks that salt up, makes the, the bait a little bit softer. So, okay, anyway, that's color talking there, guys. I'm gonna take a quick break, get a drink, and then we're gonna go into some rigging applications um, because there's a lot of different ways you can rig a fluke. So we'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're back. Now let's get into the rigging part of it. Um, there's three different times, or three different ways I'm gonna show you guys how to rig it based upon the technique I wanna use. Number one, I'm gonna show you how to rig it for the traditional way of, um, you know, working it like a fluke or something like that, like a jerk bait. There's two ways to rig it like that. And then we're gonna get into the flipping application and then the Carolina rig application. So we'll get into that. Okay, guys, the first all, first of all, let's show the, just the most common way. Um, a lot of people may or may not know this, but there's, there is a couple tricks with this. The most common way is just using some type of an offset hook, some type of EWG. And out of all the hooks that I've tried, the one I prefer is this 3 aught Gamagatsu G Finesse treble. It's a nano, uh, nano coated uh, hook on there. It's got a good needle point. It's got a good wide gap. Um, and the, I find that the 3 aught works really good for this bait. It fits really good in it. So just come through about a quarter of an inch like that. Um, always, when you're rigging anything, always really take time to make sure you come through straight. And then when you come through the bottom, bunch it up a little bit like this and then come all the way through the top and then i just lay it on the top like that i don't even i don't even put the tip of it a lot of people will put the tip back in like that i don't even think that's necessary when you're fishing like a fluke just lay it along the top like that and sometimes guys um, make a channel like this don't just like put it one time if you make a channel like this it'll really increase your hookup percentage like that so not only make a channel, but sometimes pull it a little bit, like try to enlarge that hole, waller it out, and uh, lay it on the top like that. And another thing about this, guys, there's, because there's, depending upon how you rig this hook, the bait is gonna have a different action. If you rig it sort of like where, where it's really flat, like it's straight down like this, when you jerk the bait, if it's flat like this, it's going to hop out of the water. And you really don't want that most of the time. Sometimes you do if you're trying, if the fish are like schooling. But what you want is you want it to point down like that. So see how the tail is coming down? And you do that by just pulling the back down a little bit. And what happens when you have this thing pointed down like that and you jerk it, it will jerk it underwater and it won't, it won't tend to pop out of the water. So rig it like that where the tail actually comes inward like that. This is a very, very critical rigging aspect of the flute because if you don't get this just right, you're not gonna get the action that you need out of a flute to, in order to work that. And also, one thing I would suggest highly is if you're fishing the bait like this a long time, you definitely wanna put, a, put it on a barrel swivel. So um, put a barrel swivel on with maybe like a 12 inch leader or something on it, and that'll keep this thing from twisting because a fluke will twist. It'll twist your line bad most of the situ most of the time, unless you're using a barrel swivel. Also, I like the barrel swivel because it helps sink it a little bit, and you can work the bait a little bit faster. And most of the time, I prefer to fish a fluke on 17 pound test, Seaguar and Vizex line. I've tried 12, I've tried 17, but it seems like for castability and just overall performance, 15 pound test is a good a good deal with this. Now, the next way I want to show you how to rig it is how I rig it most of the time. I rarely rig it like I just showed you there, um, and I'm going to show you guys why. <clears throat> and I sort of developed this myself. I don't know anyone that really came up with this. This is sort of something I came up on my own with it. And I find that the, that the way I'm going to show you to rig it right here, it not only gets you better hookups, but the, it's easier to get action out of the bait, and the bait looks better in the water. So in the block it rigging method, I'll call it. What you want is a straight shank. This is a Gamagatsu 3 aught G Finesse flipping hook. Just a heavy cover flipping hook, 3 aught. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna come in, and I'm, a, I'm not gonna come in just a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna thread this thing all the way on the shank. So this right here is very critical to go slow because what you have to do, guys, is you have to thread this in just underneath the, the flat part there because if you go too deep, you're gonna come out the hole right here. 
So you gotta keep it right along this flat part. So just go real slow with it. And we're gonna run it down the entire edge there of the, of the top. And you gotta come straight. Sometimes, you know, you may have to doodle a couple times to get it right. And I'm gonna come through about, about this much. See, see, I got bunched up there. I'm gonna open up the hole right there. And I'm gonna come through with that hook through the bottom. See, it is right there. And then I'm going to just straighten it up a little bit. And again, I'm gonna point it down. I'm gonna have the hook where I'm gonna have the hook where it goes down like this. So what this does, guys, this will give you it, it, it'll increase your hooking percentage 50%. Having that you got that exposed hook right there. If they come up from underneath it and grab it, they get that hook because if you have the hook on the top, weedless, the fish has to actually come up and over the bait in order for you to hook it. And here the fish can attack it from coming up on the bait like this and you got an exposed hook in there. And guys, I fish it like this all the time unless I'm fishing around something so thick I can't get a hook through, which is very rarely. Most of the time I'm fishing a fluke around the edges of cover. I'm not coming through the middle of cover. So I'm gonna say that 90% of the time, this is how I fish it right here. And you especially wanna use the barrel swivel on this setup because this is a line twisting son of a gun like this. But guys, spend some time rigging it like this. This is going to, it's gonna get you more bites and it's gonna get you more hookups by having this exposed hook. Don't be afraid of that hook there because you're not gonna get hung up that much. And even if you do get hung up, <coughs> you don't have the bait very deep and you're never gonna lose it. So that's, that is my favorite way to fish it as far as from a traditional fluke standpoint. Okay, the next way I'm gonna show you guys how to rig it is by flipping it. Now, flipping is probably one of the most underrated ways to, to work a fluke I've ever seen. A fluke is a great lure to flip with. My buddy Brent Chapman, if you guys follow fishing much, you know who Brent is. Brent got me on the flipping the fluke deal 25 years ago, and it's a really good way to catch them. So it's pretty simple with the, with the fluke deal, guys. I'm gonna show you, I, I, I go back to the same three yacht uh, offset hook. Most of the time, I'm always using the watermelon. Since I'm flipping, you know, I'm wanting to, I don't really want a shad imitator, I want more a crawdad imitator. So I'm going to rig the fluke up just like I do. And when I'm flipping it, I will put it back in there. See how I've got the, the point of the hook back in the plastic there? Because a lot of times I'm flipping it in bushes and stuff. So you do need a little bit weedless and you and you want to make it straight. You don't want the crooked look on there. <laughs> and then I've got my slip sinker. My slip sinker, I prefer, you know, anywhere between a quarter to a five sixteen ounce sinker. You got right there. And then I'm going to peg it with a, a toothpick. Guys, you hear all the bobber stopper and peg it. I have yet to find a better pegging system than a toothpick because you know why I like a toothpick is because you can decrease or increase the amount of tension that you have on the on the sinker because you don't want this sinker locked down. You you want the sinker when that fish hits, you want it to move a little bit. You don't want it to get locked down there because you want that sinker to separate away from your Texas rig. So that is going to be my Texas rig setup just like that on there for flipping and pitching. Uh, most of the time, I'm going to, I'm going to be flipping this on <coughs> really anywhere between 17 to 20 pound test Seaguar and Vizex line, um, and just flipping it around whatever shallow cover that you have available. I mean, it could be shallow grass, it could be wood, it could be docks, whatever. But flipping a fluke is a really good technique to use because a lot of fish don't see them; they just simply do not see it. And there's just, it's just got a different look. It doesn't have any action to it, but something about the profile of the fluke, it'll get you a lot of bites when you're flipping, especially if you're in a situation where there's a lot of fishing pressure. So definitely try that. I would I would go to the uh, either the green pumpkin or the watermelon. Um, I probably do use green pumpkin more for flipping, but uh, you know, unless I'm fishing in Florida or something where that water's a little bit more tannic. Okay, now finally, We've got the Carolina rig set up. Now the Car guys, Carolina rigging a fluke is again, what Carolina rig is sort of like a forgotten technique, but 
I fish a fluke on a Carolina rig more than any other bait, more than a lizard, more than a centipede, more than a worm. A Carolina rig fluke is a deadly technique to catch fish on. And I'll show you how to set it up here, guys, with it too. And I'm using a little bit smaller hook. This is a 2 aught Gamagatsu G Finesse. You want a little bit light, a little bit smaller diameter hook when you're Carolina rigging because you, this, this fluke is gonna be floating around on the back of your Carolina rig and you don't want a big heavy hook to keep it on the bottom. <coughs> you want a little bit lighter hook so it'll sort of float around a little bit you know, easier like that. So I've got my fluke rig like that. I've got my barrel swivel uh, and the length on it varies. I mean, the, as far as the length on your Carolina rig, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're fishing uh, where you want it high, high up above the grass, you may use a longer leader, like a five or six feet leader. But most of the time I prefer, you know, like a 15 or 18 inch leader, you know, 15 inches, two foot is a really good uh, technique with that. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our bead system. Now, the bead system, I like to use a combination of like a red and a, and a uh, some type of a yellow bead. So I'm gonna put the yellow bead on first. I sort of got this backwards how I would do it if, if it was just a uh, regular setup. I got my yellow bead. And then the next thing I've got on there is my clacker. Now you can buy these anywhere. This is just a brass clacker, they call them. It creates a little bit more noise. And put that on there. Like that. And then I've got one more bead to come in there. Like that. And then I've got a brass um, weight here. Now brass, you wanna use brass guys because Brass will create a lot more noise for you than lead. So I've got that set up like that. And you can you can hear it makes a nice little clacking noise there. And that's the way that I <clears throat> set up my Carolina rig right there. That's a really good, really good way to set that up there. Okay, so there's the that's the main rigging system, guys. There. Um, got over the rigging, we've got over the colors. Take another quick break to get a drink here, and then we're gonna go over um, the rod and reels I use, and we're gonna go over how to impart action on your uh, soft plastic stick bait. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, we're back. Now we're gonna talk about how to work, how to impart action on these different techniques with the soft plastic stick baits. And also we're gonna talk about the equipment because these are two of the most critical elements because in addition to the sight of these lures, as far as imparting action and getting the reaction strike from the fish is really critical, especially when you're fishing a fluke in a traditional manner. So we're gonna go over how I like to work them and start about the setup. So first of all, let's talk about the setup with just the traditional fluke when you're just working it like a soft plastic jerk bait. Um, the rod that I use is the Mega Bass Perfect Pitch. This is a seven foot two inch rod. It's, it's classified as like a medium heavy. And when you're working the fluke, you know, just like in a traditional manner that we'll talk about here, you want some type of a seven foot medium heavy rod because the point of the matter is, is when you're work, when you get a strike on that bait, like you know, you, you see the fish take it, you're you have to generate force to penetrate that hook through the plastic and into the fish's mouth. It's not like a treble hook lure where you can just reel it and they sort of hook themselves. You've got to generate enough force and power, almost like you would with a jig or a Texas rig lure or something like that, to get the penetration. So therefore, that's why you want a little bit stiffer rod. Now the way you want to work a traditional fluke is what we're talking about is you know make a cast out there out there and normally what i like to do is i let it as soon as the bait hits the hits the water i let it sink for maybe two or three seconds to get it down in the water because if you start working it right off the bat um, a lot of times it'll blow out even if you have it rigged right so let it sink a few seconds and then just start with some gentle twitches like that like one two three pause one, two, three, like that. If the water's a little bit warmer, don't pause it, keep it coming. Go, do, just, just work it like that while you're reeling it like that, jerking back and forth. And another thing, depending upon the angle of how you jerk, it's also gonna create a different action. So if you jerk downward, like with the downward trend like that, it's gonna cause that bait to go down and off to the side a little bit more. But if you jerk it to the side like that, it's gonna keep that bait a little bit higher in the water column 
and it's also going to get a more pronounced side to side movement on with that. A lot of that just depends on uh, the mood and the personality of the fish and the way you're fishing the bait around cover. Now there's two primary ways that I fish the fluke in the traditional manner. Number one is a round cover and number two is an open water. If I'm fishing the fluke in open water, say I'm throwing it out off a main lake point or something, I tend to work it harder and faster. I'm jerking it to the side, I'm working it harder and faster. I got more of an erratic action because I'm trying to pull the fish from a long distance away to get that bait. So, you know, on an open water situation, I'm trying to create as much erratic action side to side as I can. But if I'm fishing it next to an object, say for example, I'm skipping underneath the boat dock or I'm throwing it along the edge of some grass or maybe I throw it along a lay down tree. When I do that, I'm using shorter twitches just like that because I'm trying to keep that bait in one position or one spot. Say for example, there's a lay down tree and I toss that, that fluke next to that tree. I'll let it sink a little bit and then just short twitches the rod like that. I'm just, I'm wanting that fluke just to barely move side by side like that, to keep it next to that, that ambush point. Whereas in the open water, I'm trying to get that fluke to go crazy like that everywhere. And when you're fishing it crazy like that, this is another reason rigging it with the, the, the exposed hook is gonna help you out because it just gives it a lot more wild action. But that's what I use uh, in the traditional fluke set though. Now the other two, when I'm talking about Carolina rigging or flipping a fluke, for both techniques, I'm using a flipping stick. I got the Mega Bass Alkley's flipping stick, seven foot, 11 inches long, uh, medium heavy action again with that. And obviously when you're flipping and pitching, it's just pretty self-explanatory. You know, you're just using the traditional pitching and flipping uh, you know, technique. Flip it out there, let it hit to the bottom, just sort of shake it a little bit, pull it like that. Nothing fancy about it. Same way you'd work a creature bait or a Texas rig or a jig or anything like that. Now the Carolina rig, the reason I like the flipping stick for the Carolina rig is number one, it can handle a longer leader. Say for example, if I've got a four or five foot leader out there, you know, I, I can take my time and I can go hold, you know, watch where it is and I can cast that four or five feet leader way out there without it, you know, hitting the water. So the extra length allows me to, uh, you know, use a variety of leader lengths. Second with that, with a longer rod on a Carolina rig, I can handle the heavier weight. Like sometimes I use up to an ounce weight as a sinker. I can make a longer cast. And also when I get the strike on a Carolina rig, a flipping stick allows me to take up a, a lot more line on the hook set because you can cast a Carolina rig a long way out there. And if you cast it out there, you know, 50, 60, 70 feet, you've got a tremendous amount of stretch in your line with, with fluorocarbon line. So the flipping stick and the stiff tip on there will allow you to move that bait a long distance on the hook set. So that's why it's a little bit better. And there's two different ways that I like to work a fluke on the Carolina rig. The first one is I'll throw it out there, let it get to the bottom and I don't reel it, I just drag to the side, just like that, and then, then I take up the slack like that, and I just slowly drag it like that, just dragging, just dragging the rig across the bottom. <coughs> That's the number one way I like to work it, and I usually use that if I'm fishing an open bottom that doesn't have a lot of cover on it, and I'm, again, I'm trying to cover water. Now, if I'm fishing specifically like around a drop-off or around some type of cover, I'll throw it out there, let it hit the bottom, and I'll pull it up just like a Texas rig worm. And I'll actually work it, just I'll actually impart action on it, just like a worm, like that. And the reason I do that is by imparting action and twitching it like that, I can work the bait slower and I can keep it, you know, next to that drop off or next to that piece of cover a little bit longer than if, than if I use the drag technique with that. Hook set, a little bit the same on the both. Um, you know, pretty much self-explanatory flipping. If I'm out there and I got a strike and I'm, you know, I get a strike flipping with the fluke, I simply reel up until the line gets tight, pull back on it and reel at the same time. And the same on the Carolina rig. Throw it out there, get the Carolina rig bite, and I'll just sort of sweep set the hook to the side like that and just reel fast at the same time. Now, one of the things I will tell you about 
when you're fishing a fluke, the traditional fluke, like working like a soft plastic jerk bait, is once you cast it out there, and, and say for example, you know, you're working it and all of a sudden you feel you either feel a bite, your line gets tight, or you see a fish come up and get it. Resist the hesitation to set the hook right off the bat because most of the time you're gonna miss it. So many times, guys, these bass will come up on a fluke and they'll bite the tail of it. And what they do is they'll swim away with it. And then a lot of times as they're swimming away with it, they'll go ahead and grab it and eat the whole thing. So when you get a fluke bite out there, resist the, or I know it's hard to do because when you see a three or four pounder come up and boil on it and take it in there, <coughs> take a second, never set the hook right off the bat. Get the strike, when you feel the strike or see the strike, simply let the fish move with it, maybe two or three feet, reel into it, and then pull back and set the hook. But let the fish move probably two to three feet at least once you detect the strike, they're not gonna drop it. You know, there's no weight. All it is is a piece of soft plastic. So they're gonna keep it in their mouth for quite a long time. So that's equipment, how to work it. Now we are gonna get into the final phase of the seminar. We're gonna be talking about areas to fish the fluke in and some more details on that. I'm gonna get a drink and I'll be right back. Okay guys, now we're gonna have a conversation into some seasonal patterns and the type of areas that you need to fish the three different type of flukes in. You know, whether it be the traditional fluke, flipping it or on a Carolina rig. Now, one of the things about flukes is like, um, that they will catch fish, I'm gonna guess, in my opinion, like eight to nine months out of the year. They're not gonna be much of a wintertime bait. You're not gonna catch many fish on, not to say that you can't, but I usually fish them from, from like late March into November is sort of the time frame, or basically any time the water temperature is like over 55 degrees, that's when sort of the window. So. When that water temperature first starts reaching 55 degrees, like in March, I'll fish it from then all the way up to when it falls down below 55 degrees, say in November or December. That's sort of the frame with that on there. <clears throat> so let's talk a little about, <clears throat> we'll move into uh, like uh, pre-spawn, spring, summer, and fall, sort of my favorite times to do it. Now, right off the bat, let's go into pre-spawn. The best time to fish a fluke in the pre-spawn is with the Carolina rig. The Carolina rig is notoriously a really good pre-spawn bait for the most part, especially if you guys are fishing um, lakes that have grass in it. A, there's something about a grass lake and a Carolina rig and the pre-spawn that's really good. So that's probably one of my favorite times of year to fish a fluke in it. And when you're fishing during the pre-spawn with the Carolina rig, it's all about staging areas. And those staging areas for the most part are either main lake points or secondary points and man-made impoundments, or they are, they're on some type of a grass flat adjacent to some type of a ditch in a grass lake. So if you're fishing a grass lake in Florida or Texas or one of the TVA lakes, something like that, try to concentrate your areas in bays and creeks that have some type of a channel with grass next to it. It's a really good area for a Carolina rig. And probably one of my favorite areas in, in a regular man-made impoundment during the pre-spawn is on any secondary point in a major creek. So pick out some of the two or three of the biggest creeks on the lake you guys got and start running, you know, specifically those flatter points. If you got flatter points that have smaller rock or clay or sand, that can be a really good place with a Carolina rig. And the depth is relative to your water clarity for the most part. Uh, in a stained water situation, if you got water visibilities around two foot, you're looking to catch those fish in that five to 10 foot range. And if you've got a clear water environment, you know that 10 to 25 down to 30 foot range can be a really good deal. Um, this will also work um, into the summer and into the post spawn some. Carolina rig is also a good lure for the post spawn. So when those fish start moving out into their post spawn areas like ledges and deeper points, it can also be good as, you know, up into June, something like that. <clears throat> now, when you get into the spawn, in other words, when you get close to 60 degree water temperature, sort of in that 60 to 70 degree range, this is the number one time of year to fish a fluke in the traditional manner, like the soft plastic stick bait where you're twitching it. This is by far the best time of year to do that. And what you wanna look for 
is to go into those spawning type areas. Now the fish don't have to be spawning, although a spawning fish will bite it, but you're basically fishing coves, any type of areas, flat banks, where those fish are getting ready to move into spawn. This is, this is when that bait shines more than anything else. So what I like to do, for example, that time of year is I just fish coves. I just fish, you know, coves where I think the fish are getting ready to move back into spawn and just get into those coves. And I start at the, I start at the point leading into the cove and I work the entire cove around, you know, two thirds of the way in, halfway in, you know, three quarters of the way in the back end, all the way in the back end and out the other side. Because in the springtime of the year, you're gonna have those fish migrating in and out of those coves all the time. So you're apt to catch them anywhere in the cove. But as long as you concentrate on those areas where you think those fish are getting ready to move into spawn or spawning or coming out of, really good place to fish the fluke in, in that situation. And that's going to last all the way up into the post spawn. So for the most part, let's say if you guys are in the central part of the United States, this is going to be a bite that's going to exist from about the uh, first part of April into the first part of June. There's a pretty good window there, and it's going to change depending where you're at geographically, north or south. It's a pretty good deal with that. Now, the uh, as you get into the post-spawn period, this is when the flip and fluke really works good because a lot of times in the post-spawn, like in late April, May, and into June, this is traditionally when you have higher water than normal. And you have, if you're gonna have any flooded cover in the lake that you fish, a lot of times it's at this time of year. And fishing a fluke in flooded cover is my favorite way to fish it. If you've got flooded willow trees, flooded bushes, any type of flooded trees, it can be really good. Flipping a fluke around shallow vegetation is outstanding that time of year during the spawn and the, pre -spawn and the post spawn. <clears throat> so if you have a lake that has lily, lily pads in it, any type of shallow milfoil or hydrilla, gator grass, water willows, anything like that, really, really good way to catch them on there. Reeds, uh, one of my favorite, I, I probably caught more fish flipping a fluke in reeds and cattails than I have anyways, anywhere. So all you guys that fish down south in Florida or maybe even in Arkansas along the Arkansas River, um, flipping that fluke into those cattails and reeds is a really good way to catch them on that. But it's sort of, for, for whatever reason, it's sort of like relegated a little bit more to a spring bait as far as the flipping goes on it like that. And again, that lasts up, you know, into June, it seems like. Now, once you start getting into the summer months a little bit with that, um, a lot of it is situational based upon the lake that you're fishing. Because if you have a really clear water lake, say the water visibility is over four or five foot clarity, you can catch a fluke, you can catch fish on a fluke, either Carolina rigging or fishing it as a soft plastic stick bait all the way through the summer and into the fall to some extent in a clear water environment under certain conditions. Those conditions are low light levels or if it just happens to be on those days that you've got some rainy conditions, which doesn't happen a lot in the summertime, but if you've got one of those, say if some type of a cold front or front moves through in the summertime and you got a cloudy or rainy day, it's a really good place to fish a fluke fast along the surface. Um, also for schooling fish in the summertime of year, a fluke is a really good bait to fish on schooling fish. And one of my favorite ways to fish it on schooling fish is I put it on a spinning rod because if you've got bass busting, say like you guys that fish Lake Hartwell a lot where there's a lot of you know, spotted bass that bust on the surface. You can put that on a spinning rod and you can make an, you can make an extremely long cast with a spinning rod with a fluke into those schooling fish. So that's another good, really good way to catch them. But um, sort of a, it's, it's pretty much relegated to low light conditions, uh, schooling fish and that type of deal. And again, the Carolina rig is gonna work to some extent if you're fishing hard structure. But it seems like to me, after about the second or third week of June, the Carolina rig sort of starts phasing out a little bit and it's not near as productive. I consider the Carolina rig a bait from, like I said, March into June, but after June, not quite as much. And the flipping part of it, guys, you can catch them, you can still catch them flipping a fluke throughout the summer, especially around boat docks sometimes. One of the things I like to do around boat docks 
if you have like the pier type docks with the pilings on it, is put that fluke on a light sinker, like an eighth ounce sinker or three sixteenths ounce, put it on 15 to 17 pound test fluorocarbon and pitch it around those pilings and it sort of spirals down like that. It can be a pretty good way to catch them with that. And then finally guys, in the fall time of the year, this is another really good time to fish a fluke in the traditional soft plastic stick bait sense of twitching it like that. If you've got bass that are in shallow cover that you're catching them on a spinner bait or a crank bait or a uh, chatter bait or something like that, say those fish are back up in a creek, like right now this time of year, you've got some lay downs or shallow stumps. A lot of times you can take that fluke and fish it around that shallow cover fish it visible in those areas and catch them with that, especially once that water temperature starts getting down around that 60 degree mark, that can be highly effective with that, as long as you have water that's pretty clean. I remember one of the best, um, one of the best fall trips I've ever had, or, you know, catching them on a fluke, because I was fishing Lake Lanier in a Bassmaster Top 150 tournament in November. The water temperature, I remember it was 57 degrees in that tournament, and I was catching them. I was going back into the creeks, and any time that I would find a blow down tree on a steep bank, I'd take that fluke and I'd pitch it up next to that tree and just twitch it maybe a foot or two under the surface, and those fish would come up, come up out, of the, out of those clear water trees and hit that fluke. So that's just another way you can catch them there. And obviously that's just some stuff that's worked for me. You guys can sort of use your own imagination uh, with that and you know figure out the patterns that you are unique for the lake that you fish but anyway guys hope you all enjoyed the seminar here on the fluke um, like I said a fluke is I've, I've sort of got a, uh, <coughs> a, 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 a hate love relationship with fluke, fluke. <coughs> I like fishing them but they can be pretty frustrating to fish because a fluke is a little bit like a glide bait you get a lot of fish that will follow the thing and not eat it or some of the fish will eat it and not you can't catch them because they hit the tails or something like that in order to, for a fluke to be really good in the traditional sense you've got to have the fish just in the right mood and the right personality not so much for the flipping and the carolina rig but for the regular fluke fishing so anyway i hope you enjoyed it hope it helps you guys catch a few more fish and man i really appreciate you guys watching this week's seminar and we'll be back next week with another one see you guys later